The system settings, the tools in the garage to fine tune this shiny hot rod known as Ubuntu. In this video, I'll show you how to use the system settings manager. All right, so to go into system settings, we'll enter the activities overview and we can type in settings and we can click on the settings app right here. And this will open up the system settings. Alternatively, we can click on the top right area here and we can click on the little gear box right here and it will also open the system settings. They both get you to the exact same place. There are many roads that lead to Rome here. <laughs> So I'm going to run you through real quickly these system settings. Thankfully, it's a very easy to use interface. It's very user friendly. So I'm just going to walk you through a couple of features here. If you want to enable a Bluetooth device, you'll do it in here. This is your Bluetooth module. I don't have one installed, but when it's enabled, you'll see all of the devices listed here. And that gives you a chance to connect to any Bluetooth headsets, recorders, Bluetooth mice, game pads, what have you. If you want to change the background, you can left click on here and there are two options here. You can change both the background and the lock screen. So if you wanted to go into the lock screen you could and just check it out, you can press this little lock button right here and that enables the lock screen. It'll turn off the screen by default and this is what your lock screen looks like. You can press any key on your keyboard in order to lift the lock screen and then put in your password and log back in. So. If you want to change the background image of the lock screen, you can change it here. If you wanted to give yourself a nice view of a rope, then uh, there you go. There's a, there's a view of the rope. And you can see that when you lock the screen. So now when you lock it, you're greeted to a nice, neatly bundled twine of rope. Congratulations. If you wanted to change the background screen, uh, it does the same thing. You'll see that it gives you a small set of wallpapers at first here. If you want to choose the pictures in your pictures folder, that's all of the uh, contents of this folder right here. And you can choose these. So if you have a bunch of wallpapers or if you have some images downloaded from the web, in this case my awesome cool cyberpunk wallpaper, and you want to set that as your background, you can do so by choosing the pictures tab right here. And if you just want a basic color for your background, for whatever reason, you can select it and then press select. There we go. That's better. Now, selecting the dock allows you to make some changes to the dock here. If you want to auto hide the dock, it's more of an Intel hide, it's not a true auto hide, but it will hide when there's any windows overlapping it. So if windows start to cross it, then you can see that it now hides. If you maximize this window, you'll see the dock now goes away and you have to left, you have to scroll over to the left edge of the screen in order to open up the dock. If you minimize the, uh, if you re restore the window to its normal size, then the dock returns. You can also modify the height or the size of the icons. So if you prefer smaller icons, you can do that. And you can also change the position of the dock from the left edge of the screen to the bottom edge if you prefer. This gives it more of a more of a Windows-like look. Or you can change it to the right side. So it's up to whatever you prefer. The notifications allows you to uh, adjust whether you want a particular app to notify you. So if you're tired of something, let's say you're listening to music on Rhythmbox, but you're tired of it alerting whenever there's a new song that comes up every time it changes songs. So you can disable the notification pop-ups and now it won't show any of those notifications when a new song comes up. So that's where this is of a particular benefit. Same with like the Firefox web browser, uh, whenever there's any alerts or notifications there, like you've downloaded a file, and if you don't want that to show, that's what you can do by this area here. This is a very useful setting, the search setting. So this allows you to modify where you want the, the overview search to be looking when you're typing in a search string. 
So if I'm looking for files like, uh, say, photos, and it comes up with a list of things here, it's coming up with some settings to choose from, it's looking through documents, it's looking through uh, Ubuntu software for some new photo programs that I can download, but let's say I don't want it to look for new programs to download. Let's say I don't want it to show that on the listing on the results. So I can go to the Ubuntu software entry here and toggle this off. And now when I search for photos, that listing no longer shows. So another very helpful benefit to that is I can click the gear over here and this will allow me to search different locations for files on my computer. So if there are bookmarks for other locations, let's say I have another hard drive on here and I want to search those files as well, I can create a bookmark over here on the file manager and let's say I wanted to Let's just say I want to go to media here and I want to make a bookmark over in media. So now if I close this and reopen it, you'll see bookmarks and you'll see media appear. And that's the bookmark I just created. So by enabling that, when I search for files, it will now search in that media folder. Now I don't encourage doing this because this is not this isn't a typical location where you do that, so don't do this exactly as I did. Do do as I say, not as I do, right? <laughs> so that's the particular benefit when uh, using the search parameter, the search system settings. You can you can search from the documents, the files. Uh, you can search any of the GNOME applications. So if you have like for example GNOME weather and you want to search for the weather for the day you can search from there or if you want to search for a terminal or, or search the web straight from your desktop that's a super handy feature that you can modify straight from here. If you want to change the language the language is available to change here. If you have trouble seeing the screen or you need some larger text or something else to help you uh, to make it easier for accessibility purposes on-screen keyboards, you can do that straight from the universal access options over here. So online accounts is a big one because this is what we ran through this in the beginning of the first video and this allows you to modify your online account. So if you want to say log in with your Google account but you don't want uh, and you want it to show your calendar entries on no, on the Google Calendar, but you don't want it to access your files from the Google Cloud, you'll have different options that appear on the right side that you can toggle on and off after you have set up your account here. And that's where this becomes a particular benefit. You can also make the same changes for your Facebook account, for your Microsoft account, and you, this is where you manage all of your online accounts that merge and mesh with the GNOME desktop. So privacy, if you don't like having a, your screen lock and you want to have that disabled, you can disable the automatic screen lock and now it won't ask you for your password or go, go to a lock screen whenever you have it set that the screen powers off. It just stays on and you're connected. Okay, in the application section here, this is just going to show a couple of integration options with these applications. So if you want to enable or disable notifications completely, you can do that by selecting here. There are also options like uh, the archive manager. This gives you the option to select what this program handles. So they call that the default handlers, which is the types of files and links that this application opens. So if you want this to be the default application, this in this case, this is for opening up zip files or .rar files. And if you want this to be the default or if you want it to change from the default, you can select this and then you can uh, select the type of file and simply select unset. And now it won't open up with that file. So that's where this comes in handy. The sharing option allows you to do screen sharing as well as remote access on your machine from a network. So if this is enabled and you want to activate screen sharing, 
you can toggle this on over here and you can put in a password and then screen sharing allows remote users to view or control your screen by connecting to this address here. So it's a nifty way for if you are working on the go or you're, you're in, at an office and you go to a different office or a different room in that building and you want to still do some work or still access your files really quickly, screen sharing and uh, the remote sharing can be a helpful benefit there. One of the most common things people are going to want to use is the sound. So when you're looking at the sound, you're looking at both the input and the output sources as well as the alert sounds that you can choose for your system. So right now the output device is set to uh, line out and it's going to the default out on my system. You can see the input, just by the way I'm talking here, the input device is set to the uh, built-in audio as well and I can adjust the volume of both of these and this is where I can select if I'm using a sound card or using speakers or I want to switch the output device to headphones if I have two forms of audio outputs plugged in I can use this area here for that and uh, as well as being able to modify the system sounds the volume on the system sounds and uh, even over amplifying the audio so if I want to go past a hundred percent so really cranking it up you know right cranking you know this one's got 11 you're cranking up to uh, a higher setting than even should be physically possible the numbers all go to 11 and oh, 11 and most of 11 the and then amps go up to 10 exactly why don't you just make 10 louder and make 10 be the top number and make that a little louder these go to 11 <laughs> you can do that the power options gives you the chance to modify when you're changing the uh, powering off the screen so if you want it to power off after 15 minutes or in my case if you never want it to power off because I'm a power glutton like that a thirst for power then you can you can choose that setting there uh, also what the automatic suspend will do so if your computer's idle for an hour it'll automatically go into suspend and you can say it'll save your progress and save your status so you can jump back in and maybe save a few bucks on your electricity bill, God willing. So going into network, and this is where you would be able to access your Wi-Fi or your access your different network connections or make your change the settings on your network over here. Uh, oh no, my IP address. <laughs> you can you can uh, switch it to IPv4 or six. This is kind of where you make all of the adjustments. You put in your proxies if you need to and you can make the settings here. You can also do that on a basic way from over here and in this case if a Wi-Fi adapter was connected you would be able to see the different Wi-Fi connections right here where you could connect to them and they would show up uh, oh I'm sorry they would also show up here there would be a Wi-Fi option that would appear right below or above the Bluetooth module and so just one place where you can adjust your network settings your devices lets you manage all of your hardware. So this is where you adjust the settings for things like your displays. You can adjust the resolution or the orientation if you want the nightlight mode on uh, from sunset to sunrise. And now after the sun goes down, or at least from, I don't know, whatever sunset or sunrise is, it'll fade the, uh, the blue on the screen so that you can uh, hopefully get to sleep a little bit easier that's that's the hope uh, same with your keyboard settings your mouse and touchpad you can choose the natural scrolling method make all the adjustments there and of course this is where you adjust your printers now the cool thing about Ubuntu is that if you have a printer connected through USB or even through network it will automatically add the printer the latest versions of the Linux kernel and the latest releases of Ubuntu allow for that it's super awesome and makes it really easy to connect to printers and you'll see them located here where you can make them the default you can check the ink levels depending on the, your provider so this is where you manage all your printers uh, same with removable media the, this is not where you manage removable media but rather what Ubuntu chooses to do when you plug these things in or insert a, a disk in by default so if you have an audio CD then it will automatically run Rhythmbox and play that CD if you so choose. Or same with a, uh, if you plug in an MP3 player, 
you know, it chooses, it asks you what you want to do. Or you never prompt or start programs on media insertion. So it's, it's up to you. Uh, and your color settings, finally, if you want to calibrate the color and make a different color profile to suit your needs, you can do that here. And lastly are the details. So the details is helpful for a few reasons. The first one is it lets you know which version of Ubuntu you're running uh, right off the bat. It's really easy to figure that out. The second one is it allows you to change the device name. So if you wanted to name it to something else, you could do so. Where does the benefit from this come in? It's if you have a hard drive, or I'm sorry, if you're on a network and you want to be able to figure out which PC this is on a network, that's primarily where the greatest benefit from this can come from. It also tells you things like your memory that's installed, which processor, which graphics uh, driver that you're using, and the version of GNOME. This is the GNOME desktop again, so the GNOME desktop that you're using, whether it's 64 or 32-bit, uh, whether there's any virtualization involved, and your hard disk space, as well as the option to check for updates, which would do the exact same thing as if we were to go to updates here and click refresh in the software center. So the date and time will also allow you to modify the date and time if, uh, in my case, switching from a or 24 hour to AM and PM because I'm in the States and that's just what we do for better or for worse. I don't know why, just the way we were raised. <laughs> and you can change the users here. This is where you adjust your user settings or you add or remove users from your computer. So if you want to add someone new, what you do is you press unlock and you type in your administrative password. And now at the top here, you can see add user and you can left click that. And that will let you set a new standard or administrative user with their full name, their username, and their password. You can also change it from putting your password to log in to automatically logged in. And that would be the uses there. The last option here in, in the settings that we'll talk about are the default applications. This allows you to modify the default application that opens whether you're opening a web browser or you're opening a, your mail application, your calendar. You, know, you can choose which, uh, which you prefer over here. So if for music, if for some reason I wanted to play VLC media player, when I click on an MP3 file in the file browser, now it's going to open up with VLC instead of Rhythmbox. The same as with videos, you can do the same thing. Mix and match however you like. So that, this is where you can choose the default application. And that's it, short and sweet. That's it for the system settings. I appreciate you watching. Uh, please click the like button on this video. I'd really appreciate it. And we'll move on to the next video, which is how to install, remove, and update your software. That's going to be the big one, the big one where you really get to explore all of the greatness that the open source software world has to offer. So go ahead and click on the next video, and I will see you there.